In this video, you will learn about vector tiles and how to create maps with vector tiles. There are three main advantages with using vector tiles than raster tiles. The first big advantage is the considerable uh, reduction of network requests being sent to the backend. With raster tiles, every zoom level which the user takes, a network request is sent to the backend to retrieve those pixels. And finally, when the response returns, the uh, rendering library stitches all those images together. But then with vector tiles, uh, the response received at zoom level 14 is enough to render the map up until zoom level 20, which is deep down at the street level. This is fantastic. The second big advantage is customization. You see with raster tiles, all those images are a cartographer's rendition of how a map should be. But what if you wanted to really customize? What if you wanted to change the font? What if you wanted to change the color of the river? Well, you cannot do that. But since with vector tiles, it's all vector data, you have the ability to customize anything. That's an amazing win as well. And finally, the detailed information. With raster tiles, since they're all images, you really cannot deduce the height of a terrain or height of a building. Well, you could uh, obviously do some image processing to deduce that information, but that's a lot of work. But with vector tiles, since everything is metadata, we can easily look up the information, like for example, a uh, building's height, a uh, mountain's height. What it really enables us to do is transform this map into a 3D view and even animate it if it's required. So these three are the major advantages with using vector tiles than using raster tiles. In this video, I will talk about two major platforms, popular platforms out there to render vector tiles, uh, to render vector maps with vector tiles. Let's get started. I've written an article in JavaScript store about vector maps and how to uh, consume vector tiles. So if you'd like to read, I will leave a link in the description box below. Let's get started. So, for maps especially, there is a lot of information out there about which platform to use, which rendering library to use, should it be hosted, where should it be hosted. Uh, I've taken the liberty to create this image to solve a little bit of confusion out there. So it all starts with OpenStreetMap. Now those guys own data and they do a, a fantastic job. All we need to do is uh, provide attributions for using the data. So, in this video, I will talk about two popular platforms, map platforms, which are Open Map Tiles and Mapbox. So, as you could see in the image, both the platforms use the data from OpenStreetMap, and you could uh, use the services from Open Map Tiles or Map Mapbox through their hosted service, or you can use one of your uh, own implementation to consume those services like Docker, Node, or PHP. And finally, there are a ton of libraries out there to render these vector tiles. A uh, few of the popular ones are Open Layers, Leaflet, Tangram, uh, Mapbox.js, and Mapbox.glgs. Now, these libraries do a great job, but since we are going to be talking about Open Map Tiles and Mapbox, we will be using Open Layers and Mapbox GLJS to render the map. Open Map Tiles, uh, you know, creating a, uh, creating a map with Open Map Tiles is straightforward. You create a layer, you create a map, and you apply the style to the layer, and you set the map. That's about it. And the great thing about these two platforms is that they also provide you editors so uh, to make your life easier with customizing your map. And finally, once you edit it, you will get information like a styles.json, which you can directly reference in your map. So it's really easy to customize your map and point it to the map which you're building. All right. So the editor which OpenMap Tile uses is Nick. You can log in, create an account, and edit the maps to your needs. And uh, if you're not into editing, if you just want to use their readily available uh, uh, default styling, there's a, a few five or six styling available with OpenMap tiles, like basic, bright, 
they do a decent job as well. So with only creating a tile and adding it to the map or creating a layer and adding, adding it to the map, you get this amazing visual. With Mapbox, it's even more straightforward. You just create a new instance of the map and you point it to the styles and to the uh, and the styles JSON points to the uh, vector tile server and that is set. All right, let's get into implementation, which will give more context. Let's start off with open map tiles. So with open map tiles, we use open layers to render the map. So first things first, we create a layer and then we create a map. And finally, we go look up the styles required to uh, show this map and apply the style on top of the map. That is it. Like I said, it's even more easier with Mapbox GLJS. Let's check out Mapbox GLJS real quick. So we have the access token. Uh, I shouldn't have put it out there. Well, okay. So you create a map with new Mapbox GL and you provide more options more proper more of these options are documented in mapbox glgs feel free to check it out and finally uh well that's it with that you get this beautiful map and if you want more control over uh, adding multiple layers to provide more information to your user there are events generated on the instance of the map so what you could do is you can set up listeners to uh, add multiple layers to provide more context that is about guys uh, so let's actually you know before ending the video i would like to show you how the vector data the response of the vector data actually looks so if i go ahead and uh, zoom into kazakhstan as you can see you have all the uh, request to the tiles.mapbox.com server and we get a response the vector data and with that vector data, the rendering library is able to render the maps. And also a notable thing to see over here is compared to raster tiles, this is more snappy. There is no jank and it's just, uh, it's just great. It's just fluid, it's organic. And once you get used to such fluidity, anytime you see a, a raster tiles implementation or GeoJSON, you'll be like, okay, well, am I living in uh, 2018, 19, or which year am I in? <laughs> that is the uh, conclusion to this video. In the next video, I will talk more about Mapbox GLJS. So if you like the content, like the video and also subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, if you got confused along the way, leave a comment and I will reply. With that, I will see you guys.